Well, howdy, folks. It's uh, it's been a while. Welcome to Retsu Talk episode twenty-five. Hello. A much delayed twenty-five. That's that's mostly my bad. I've been kind of really overbooked with stuff. What's your excuse? Name one thing that <laughs> would keep you from this. I I uh, the I've zenith been, of your life. Been playing Hotline Miami constantly. That's actually a pretty good excuse. I, it, it is no, uh, not just schoolwork, all that crap. Um, home ownership, <laughs> what a nightmare! No, so trying um, to make something of your life, define yourself in some way. Yeah, just, a loser. Jeez. Oh, why aren't you doing podcasts full time? You know, I actually have a paper sort of due tomorrow, but I'm podcasting. Hmm. Well, you're going to transcribe it and turn it in, right? Well, is the idea. This is what's ridiculous. My professor's a little weird. He's like, um, we have this paper. We're like, he's like, it's due on Monday, and uh, we're like, okay. And he goes, so make sure you bring a cl- uh, copy of it to class on Thursday, meaning the Thursday before the Monday, like tomorrow. We're recording this on a Wednesday, and we're all in the class. Like, wait, if it's due. Three days later, I mean, how are we supposed to, you know... He goes, oh, okay, I'll give you bonus points if you bring it, if you finish it by Thursday. So I'm, I'm going for bonus points, so... I don't know. Well, that's a really great story. How's Hotline Miami? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I'm on... Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen um, uh, the Let's Play of it before, so um, there's something awful Let's Play of it. You know? I did not know there was a thing of that. There is. It's um. It's very interestingly done. Um, I am blanking on the author, so I'm just looking it up real quick. Um, but he's he kind of leaves in some deaths, not enough where it gets boring, but enough to kind of show off the difficulty. Um, tome. That's it. Uh, and yeah, he, and deaths. You don't really lose much time doing that. You just immediately reset and do it again, floor to floor. Exactly. It's not as instantaneous as Super Meat Boy per se, but it's kind of close. Yeah. It's enough to not make you just want to give up. Exactly, yeah. When you die a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though that being said, I got... Have you gotten past... I played... I got the game several months ago. I got as far as I think it was a police station level. Yeah, I just finished that. Last you just night. finished that. That is the one I just got stuck on and well, uh, stopped for a while. Um, that one was tricky, but... Um, I don't know. The one after, it's really hard. Because it's kind of... The second floor of it, it's like you get a one little closet with a guy to get a weapon, and then there's just like this giant open space with guys, which is tough when they have guns then because they can typically see you before you see them. And it uh, there, was there a particular mask you used on the first and or second floors that you found made it easier? Um, I'm a big fan of the Ted mask, which makes dogs not attack you because dogs right. are typically my big problem. And one thing brought up in the Let's Play also is I always feel like an asshole killing dogs in video games. And especially with the Ted mask when they're not really attacking you. But you kind of have to do it to finish well, the Well, then you're rescuing them. Oh, is that it? Yeah. From, from this mortal coil. Exactly. I say, okay. Do you think they're happy living their lives attacking people who come in? <laughs> one thing I like doing, by the way, is, um, in that game is also hiding a little alcove, drawing everybody in and just punching them. Like, not even grabbing a weapon, but just standing there and just hitting them and knocking them down over and over again. Well, there's that mask you can wear that KOs people when you punch them, right? Um, I don't think I have that mask yet. I have I have the one where you uh, you can kill people by opening like opening a door on them. Oh, maybe that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. No, Rurs, Rurs mentioned um, that you can uh, uh, kill people with a punch. There's a mask that does that. Speaking of Rurs, um, I have to thank him for getting me Just Cause on Steam. Yeah, apparently it was twenty seven whole cents. <laughs> The day of that sale, so Rurse, you know, thank you for sacrificing your parking payment for video game sake. <laughs> I um yeah, I, I haven't uh, I haven't played it yet, but I, I sure will. Just Cause Two, it's it's fun. It's a good game, but it's one of those and I think this is a personal problem, but it, it's just so open world mm-hmm. that you know, the world is vast, you can do pretty much whatever you want the moment you're in there. And it's just, it's overwhelming. Kind of like, it's the same reason I never have played Skyrim or any of the Elder Scrolls games. You know, it's funny, that reminds me, that's kind of an issue I had with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas back in the day. Because mm-hmm. that was a huge world. It was like, I think virtually it was like something like, something crazy like the size of California or something like that. But it was yeah. like, um, it's so big and there's no loading times, which is part of it. Because once you go out in the country... You're just spending a lot of times in transit going... Yeah, from, long it, stretches of road. Yeah. Not, I remember that. That's I think that's around the time where I stopped, because I never beat the game. Same here, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, Just Cause 2 is that magnified. Hmm. 
Yeah. Mm. But it's still fun. You should give it a chance for sure. I mean, Don't Make Worse felt like he just flipped a quarter into the abyss. I thought he gave me Just Cause 1, though. Just Cause 1? Yeah. Is there Just Cause? Like, just, just, I thought it was Just Cause. Well, I don't know. Let me, let me take a look. I do have Steam open here, so library. Oh, um, I might, I might not have gotten it from the gifts thing. You have to, like, download your gifts, right, or something like that? You know why we're gifted you that, right? No, why? Just because. Speaking of And which, that'll wrap it up for episode 25. <laughs> let me, uh, let's segue into something else. Um, okay. Because Rurus had a request as well, which I don't know if I can fulfill. Uh, uh, and his request had to do with... Uh, marriage. Some, something we've been... Oh. <laughs> not in the state of New Jersey. Um, <laughs> not yet. Maybe that, Hang on, Chris Christie will bring it. Maybe that douchebag <laughs> from Sister Wives can help you out. But, um, did you ever watch that show? Mm-mm. I hate that guy. Um, anyway, just a quick sign up. But, uh, we, so you've been streaming as of late. I have. I had been reluctant to start it because I thought, well, remember when we did Metroid Fusion? Yeah. And I would use a uh, much less sophisticated method of streaming it. It was very choppy. You could barely see it. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was the best this southern internet technology could do. But, in fact, software has gone leaps and bounds since then. <laughs> and now if you're not on a Mac, you can do it quite easily. I use a OBS. I can stream. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to stream Hotline Miami, and I, I couldn't figure out how to get the volume right. But that's really more the game's fault. And you're not even on Twitch. Mm. You gotta have those Justin fellas switch you over. Thank you for reminding me. I do have to do that. But uh, yeah, so so you've been starting. What is it called? The beat is beat. That's what I've called it. Yes. Yeah, uh, and uh, it's on Twitch TV slash the underscore beatus. Mm-hmm. Same as my Twitter handle. That's right. And you know, just kind of whenever the mood strikes me, I just play through a game, and it's you know very cash. T- typically Friday night. Excuse me. Very cash. Okay. Typically it's Friday night when you should be doing other things, but hey, you know, whatever. Sometimes Thursday, because, <laughs> you know, the internet people, they got to go places on Friday. they got to party and get laid. Very true, yes. Yeah, so Thursday is primetime video game entertainment hours, mm-hmm. <laughs> if I do say so myself. But I, <laughs> I think I joined you for three out of four of your last ones. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I don't know if joined is the right word, more like kind of invaded. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, with with your own sort of content. <laughs> well, what happened was you were playing uh, Super Mario Brothers two, uh, really Super Mario Brothers All Stars. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I was doing very well. Yeah, no, you're great. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was late at night. There were a couple drinks involved. You weren't at your best. Um, but uh, and I brought up this thing I had read uh, like a, the week prior, which I had discovered called Sonic.exe. And I discovered it on YouTube, actually. It's a, it's a video they made out of what is called creepy pasta, which... I still don't understand the nomenclature of that. So it's, like, from what I understand, and I asked about this on my Ask FM page. You can ask things on your Ask FM, by the way. Oh, my God. It's not just people asking you things, but you can ask in response to people who ask you. Technology, how? It's an infinite feedback loop. <laughs> but it, so apparently it's an old like it came from 4chan or something where people would copy old stories and paste them into forums elsewhere. Right. But that's paste. Well, so why pasta? Copy pasta. Well, it's like I guess it's just a uh, um what do you call it when like language sort of mutates and modifies as it goes like uh, stupid? Stu- right. Um yeah. <laughs> uh it's sort of just transmutated into from copy paste into copy pasta. Well, the very first story was a real horror tale about Olive Garden. Oh, right. Yeah, and so it kind of morphed from there, is gotcha. my understanding. I see. Yeah. Or yeah. The Sopranos. Either way. <laughs> right. uh, a no, creepypasta. <laughs> they don't talk. Oh, well, they do. But, yeah, so they, whenever horror stories got involved, that got transmogrified into creepypasta. And uh, creepypasta, apparently, I don't read a whole lot of it, uh, is just like sort of... <laughs> Internet horror short stories, sometimes accompanied with videos or imagery, but I encountered the video game section, which apparently even creepy pasta authors consider really bad. Wow. Um, yeah, so uh, you've probably seen it on our YouTube page, but yeah, so basically I started reading these stories over your stream, and um, <laughs> they're really bad. Very bad. Um, so the one worst wanted me to read now uh, is... There's two. There's two that are considered good. Uh, 
and Verse wanted me to read one of them, and Admiral Curtis. And those were ghostwritten by J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Absolutely. And Admiral Curtis also asked me, or told me about one that he considered good. Um, but the first good one that I've heard of, which I, as I understand it might even be one of the first creepypastas, is called Ben Drowned. And it's more or less a haunted Majora's Mask game. And it, I've heard of that one, yeah. They, they all follow the exact same formula, which is basically... Some guy goes to a garage sale or a flea market or some off-beaten place where they sell, like, used video games, and he finds the one video game, and the label's ripped off, or something's not quite right with it, and there's written in black magic marker, and he plugs it in, and weird shit starts happening. And, you know, after a point, you got to start using emulators. <laughs> Stop going to these weird second-hand game stops, or whatever they're called. But, you know, you know like, Proton John, like, the guy who has, like, over 2,000... I don't know him either. He has, like, over 2,000, like, video game cartridges. Like, he probably has a haunted one, for real, somewhere. Yeah. And it'll kill him when he gets around to it, but fortunately, he never will. But, mm -hmm. um, no, uh, Ben Drowned, uh, I, I haven't actually read, but I've seen some of the videos, and... It's like he's got a, and I, I shouldn't even go into it because I don't really understand it. But he's but apparently the big draw of that was the guy either hacked his copy of Majora's Mask or as the author, or um, used Game Shark or something to supplement his um, gameplay experience with some sort of creepy kind of videos where he like modified the text a bit to actually say what it said in the story to give it some credence and some gravity, you know. And did he do this before or after he drowned? I, <laughs> but uh, after. Okay. He was dead. That's the twist. You, you know, allegedly, like, some kid died, his spirit, his ghost is in the, the cartridge, blah, blah, blah. The other one, which I have to say I came the closest to liking was, uh, which I don't, but I, it came there, it got close, was um, the NES Godzilla one, which is what Rush wanted me to read. Uh, which is, there's an old NES game called Godzilla King of Monsters. I don't know if you ever heard of it. I've heard of the movie. All right, well, he, it's, it's a game based on it. And what I did like about it is it kind of... It kind of kept... First of all, the guy who did it is a pixel artist, so he, like, draws the stuff he's seeing as well. You know, it says, like, I took screenshots as I went, and it includes GIFs, so that's at least some effort. But um, what I kind of like about it is it, it stays as plausible as something like that can stay. So he didn't write anything? <laughs> right. It's just a playthrough of uh, Godzilla. Game. Okay, that's what I think. It's just standard. No, no, no like, um, the things that happen in it aren't, like blood, you're gonna die, blah, 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 like, 100% of that, you know? It's like, some weird shit just happens where he's like, wait, like, that Godzilla monster should have come out after the game so came out. So he doesn't out. drop in random video game mechanics details in the middle of the story? <laughs> he does, but, like, no, 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 not like that, not like that. Like, he will be like, you know, like, I didn't want to choose Mothra because Mothra's, like, the stupidest character in this game, but blah, this level forced me to for some reason. Like, it, it kind of, like, and then weird shit happens that's not even scary, but it's just out and out strange, and it gets a little like it's basically like it holds your interest. Like you're kind of like, where the hell is he going with this? Does it stack up to goosebumps? <laughs> no, no, no. Or are you afraid of the dark? No, because then eventually he does have to imbue the spirit of someone he knew who died, and that's where it kind of goes a little off the rails. And then the ending is like a final boss battle kind of thing, which really goes off the deep end. But it, it came the closest to like, all right, this isn't so bad, you know. Godzilla's got his glasses on, flipping through the script, looking confused. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's one of those things, if you have a spare, like, half hour or 40 minutes, just, like, the, you're bored as fuck, and you, don't, and you absolutely cannot do anything productive or close to it, you might as well. No, it's, 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 it's nowhere near as bad as the ones we've been reading, though, which are just god-awful. How deep does that rabbit hole go? How ubiquitous is this video game creepypasta thing? Oh, there's, like, tons of them now. As um, much as, like, a fanfiction, pretty much? Not as much as that. Or uh, is it just a subgenre of fanfiction? I think it's pretty much a subgenre of fanfiction. Well, I mean, the one we read about Reznor, you can tell, is pretty much self-insert, where the kid's being haunted, but then, you know, by the backwards, like, Isoy and, uh, oh, wait, what was Mario again? It was Oiram? Yeah. Oiram, yeah. Yeah. Princess Peach kills me still. That was like the like, pick K up or nep or whatever it was. You know, you know that was self insert because then he's like, "No, I'm actually going to kill you cleverly using the you know what I mean like all that crap." <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just it's not it doesn't really work on a lot of levels because well, it just doesn't any levels really. Yeah, I, there are no levels that it works in. I know, like you just can't make Sonic scary, for example. Like you just can't. It's like, oh, he had a, 
he killed Tails and he had a hyper realistic smile. It's fucking Sonic. It's you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> realism's kind of out the window at that point. Yeah, by the fact that it is a video game. Right. Or like you know some of the, the or the things they try to keep obscure, like those mythos. Like, did you ever hear of like Suicide Mickey or Dead Bart? No. Um. Uh. Suicide Mickey is allegedly like uh, an old Disney. I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> it's a it's a Disney cartoon that like apparently um, drives people crazy if you watch the full three minutes of it. And uh, apparently, it's Mickey walking along Steamboat Willie's slide, and then at the end of the three minutes, he like kills himself or something. <laughs> um, you know, it's like that hidden thing in Lion King where sex appears in the leaves or whatever. It's just one of those little hidden Easter eggs they add in there. And Mickey kills himself. It's fun for the kids. You know, it's like one of those silly internet stories, though, that, like, spread around and people added to it and said, like, oh, well, right, Walt, right. Walt Disney created blah, blah, blah. And Dead Bart is a thing where if you look at The Simpsons, the way they number episodes, um, there's one missing from season one. And it's allegedly an episode where um, Bart dies and is, like, sent to hell and... Uh, or, I forget, like, he's all bloody and he's appearing as a ghost to the other Simpsons. And that well, one... at least there, that could be a Treehouse of Horror thing. Well, it's, yeah, but it's, um, if you, if you like, look at, um, what is it? Oh, it, it, uh, if you look on YouTube, somebody made, like, a Dead Bart video out of other episodes. Like, they sort of colorized Bart, and it's the episode where they go to the funeral in season one and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? It's like, mm. it's, it's just one of those things where they try to make it creepy and it's like, uh, what the hell is this, you know? Right, right. But my my point being, I, I just think there's some things like you really have to work at to make them creepy, and then short stories just don't cut it. Like there's Pokemon creepy pasta; it just does not work. <laughs> you cannot make Pikachu creepy or Mew; it doesn't happen. You know what I mean, but what if you choose horror? But it's all the huh? same. Oh, well, that is true. Yeah. Uh, you got me. You got me. You got me. Yeah. You need a lot of ambition to pull it off. Oh my god. What Seg a great segue. <gasps> so I got a segue. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome to run. It's awesome to run. <laughs> no, um, no, no one would buy a segue. Except for mall cops. I, I, it's the only place it's really picked up. Yeah, you'd fit in in New York. I don't think so. I've never seen anyone on a segue in New York. Really? You've never seen anything. Well, I'm not saying anyone with a segue. In New York, I'm thinking anything more fucked up than someone riding a segue, which I've you seen, have seen. I've seen weird shit in yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So you don't ride a segue, no one's going to give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I mean, usually the weird shit I see is also at Port Authority. If you ever want to ha- see weird shit. I thought this through. was going to segue into a creepypasta. No. Okay. <laughs> not exactly, though, but one time. I was playing 999 for the Nintendo DS while waiting for my bus at the Port Authority. Oh my god. And I realized Junpei was a real character with real emotions, and I kind of teared up. That's another thing, too. (laughs) Who the fuck, like, starts to cry when they realize the video game character died? It's a video game character. I've never forgotten Eris to this day. (laughs) But you see them die all the time. Final Fantasy VII now available on Steam. (laughs) Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's that kind of crappy PC port, though, that has all the shitty MIDI sounds and the um, awful battle sound effects. Oh, yeah, I just made But supposedly you can that. mod that out pretty easily. Oh. But. Good. There is, by the way, Final Fantasy VII Creepypasta, of course. Oh, of course there is. Of course. Um, oh, Sephiroth. Oh, sephiroth son. What else? You'd have to have a lot of ambition to play that. <laughs> oh, hey, well, double uh, segue. So I was writing two segues. Oh, uh, nice. One on each. But let's start with some news about Ambition. Um, It came to our attention that someone emailed Michael Gibson, the creator of the series. A a lot of people emailed Michael Gibson. We got several messages to that effect. And um, we tried to stay kind of quiet about that just because we didn't want to encourage people contacting him in the first place. But he did say, one person just outright asked him, have you heard of Red Spray's videos? What do you think? And he said he uh, he thought they were pretty funny, and that subscriptions to Zap Dramatic went up very rapidly hmm. around the time that our videos came out. Yeah, so he described it as win win. Yeah, and he and he is the important announcement part of that mm-hmm. is that he is working on, or at least in the brainstorming phases of five or six more episodes. Oh, good, good, yeah. Because I think he knew that things uh, got left on a bit of a cliffhanger there. Nah, I don't mind Dale going to jail. that trial deal. I don't mind Yale going to jail. Who cares? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, it's good. It's always good to know that he isn't, like, this isn't hurting his business, I guess. Or yeah, whatever, definitely. But, 
But wow, ambition's so friggin' weird. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine the mindset of someone who watched one of our videos, who saw the end, and you're like, you know, I want to see where this is going. Subscribe. Pay. Oh it sounds like you're in a creepy pasta with that ambient noise. Oh, yes. <laughs> is that Michael Gibson? Oh, my God. Is this a Michael Gibson I see before me? And then what, Helen picked up the violin and smashed Yale on the head. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh! <laughs> Classic negotiator tactic. Apparently, though, um, Gibson's worked with some universities, gotten some awards in Canada for his whole negotiator ambition stuff, and worked with a couple universities on psychology and things like that. Canada is several hundred years behind. I, yeah. And, uh, a lot of things, it, it begs the question, what universe are we living in? Hmm. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's tricky with Gibson, though, too, because I think he does some things to be intentionally funny. It's just that... It, it doesn't gel, though, with the, this should be a tutorial for speaking and everything. Yeah. I just don't know what he's going for, exactly. It's hard. It's basically hard to know when he his attempts at humor end and just weird shit begins, you know? Well, I think that was around the tryst part of ambition. Like, as a, as a, right. Well, it's like a silly example. If you remember, um, what is it, How to Get Out of a Speeding Ticket, we called it, but it was, right. uh, yeah, well, that's the one with the cop. Like, he starts off and he just bends over and farts for no reason at the beginning of it, right? Which is obviously just Gibson trying to ev evoke a cheap laugh or whatever, right? Or just showing the player that you need to re relieve tension. Right, right. Before entering a negotiation of any sort, especially with a police officer. But you actually get out of this scenario by saying you're, like, an agent working for Mission Control, which, like... Yeah, lie to the police. That's even, how you do it. Even he must know would probably get you arrested. Canada is a lawless wasteland, and they <laughs> encourage the sort of behavior. <laughs> they only hire the most the most gullible people, and like crazy gullible. You can tell these fuckers anything. Yes, I I don't know. Um, it's, it, it's just wacky land the whole series, and it, everybody in Canada is Dudley Do Right, is my understanding. <laughs> It just got worse as we watched. I'm not like bad words, but like stranger. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's funny because I think he very desperately wanted to get you to empathize with Ted, and it just can't happen. Well, Ted was more or less the character that represented Gibson, right? It, oh, I, you can you can kind of they, they kind of look alike, sort of. I never saw a picture of... Uh, There's a... Someone linked us a video of an interview with Michael Gibson where he talked about his zap dramatic thing. Does he have the little tiny goatee thing? Uh, I can't remember, but there's a... There's... You'll, you'll see it. I see. But, that, well, that's the whole issue, right? Where it's like, Ted starts out that he strapped a bomb to himself, and then even in the psychological, he's like, I'm not sure why I strapped a bomb to myself, but I woke up at the chaos, my kids were missing, blood was on the walls. And it's like, he's still not selling it, so then it's like, okay, well, maybe he was injected with a drug that made him kind of do that. Or if someone strapped the bomb to him while he was asleep. Started out with a certain idea, and then, I don't know, kind of like that whole mid-season thing of a television show, you just totally veer off course and do something else. Right, it's like... Like a I, lost sort of thing. I think the feedback he was getting, everyone's like, you know, Ted's fucking crazy. And he's like, no, no, you're supposed to change your mind, you realize Ted's being manipulated, and then, like, six episodes, he goes, yeah, this is not working at all. And, but, of um, course, when we get to the episode where you diagnose Ted, then, you know, I totally fell for him. Oh, yeah, totally. That's where he wins you over. <laughs> no matter what you do. It's funny, though, my favorite character in the series shifted a lot. Because, I mean, it was Ted for a little bit, and then he started doing And then, at the end, it immediately became Duke. Yeah. I went through a Yale phase, a Helen phase, back to Yale. Yeah. Angie was never quite there. But, right. yeah, Duke steals the fucking show. <laughs> really does with that one line. It's crazy. Well, then he keeps it up with that guitar riff green orb thing. Like, I'm not even sure what that was. Like, what was he yeah. even going for there? And again, what did Canada recognize the series for? Or did they only watch the first part? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure, yeah. honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, all his negotiator stuff seems gets crazy, too. Like, the lusty bar fly where you get shot if you do the wrong thing. or Right. Yeah, I don't quite... The sanest episode was that was the one that was too boring for us to actually post that customer service one. Yeah. Like, even that one's a little unrealistic, but it's... It's a little unrealistic, but it's more or less, yeah, you're talking to a customer service person. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. It's on Newgrounds if you want to check it out. 
Um, it's the, the one kind of funny thing about it is if you get it wrong too many times, the vagrant comes in and like gives you hints. But um, another weird thing is that the art style of that one is a little bit different for the characters, and you can see that in the trial scene where it just pretty much copy and paste the characters from previous episodes. Mm-hmm. And the customer service lady looks really different than everybody else in That's terms a, of yeah. Somebody pointed that out, like because a lot of people are like, "How is the art getting worse?" It's actually right. not. It's that he's he's it's important. just lazy. It's imp- he's importing so much stuff from previous things that as his art style changed, it just creates this wholly inconsistent look and feel to things. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I guess more power to him that he's found some measure of success with this stuff. But what a weird fucking has he found success? That's what puzzles me so much. I I mean because he's... he hasn't ma- so okay he hasn't made a new episode since two thousand and six. That's true. And people are still subscribed to the website and paying? But he did make one about the Haiti, um, the earthquake in Haiti, so he's still around, you know? Well, thank... Wait, what? He made a, he made a um, sort of negotiator kind of game around the earthquake in Haiti. I did check it out. It's, it's mostly photos of that, and it, I, it's pretty obviously not great material to riff on, so... Understandable, yeah. Right, yes, yes. Um, but he did do one that was all 9-11 footage, which is going to be a hilarious video coming out tomorrow. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, um, and it's kind of tasteless how he just imports Duke's line and copy and paste it so many times in that video. It's just... <laughs> not you, very you mean good. the one about being the long arm of the law? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> Sir, this is a closed marriage council. <laughs> I love Duke now. But also he has uh, Sir Basil Pike, which we're cur- currently in the middle of. Yeah, so after he finished that first, or after he did not finish that first series, he Ambition. was so inspired, he took some of his characters and made more stuff about, mm-hmm. I think it's about not anti-bullying? It's supposed Even to- though he has your character do bullying? And the later stuff doesn't really involve bullying. Bullying's kind of like a... Right, then it just shock. involves rock. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that... Alright, so, I don't know if Janina is supposed to be his daughter, but that 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 music song... That song appears twice in the game, and once in the pre... It's the song for the preview of the game. So, I have a theory that, Jan, that Janina's song is actually his daughter's song, and Sir Basil Pike, just, besides bullying, is also there to promote his daughter's band. Which Canada's a big fan of. Right, yes. Yeah. Which I don't know it has a name. It might be Sir Basil Pike for all I know, but mm. the band actually called Ambition Babies. <laughs> you might as well call it Ambition Babies. Mm-hmm. Might as well. So yeah, it, it seemed Ambition seemed like a successful series on our end. I guess people seem to like it. Lots of uh, fan art and such came back from it. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Which is usually a good sign of people enjoying stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. So um, I have the second episode. Um, in my video studio, I just have it, you know what I mean, my, like, recording software. Yeah, your, your studio. Right, yes. <laughs> you record everything in a studio that you rent, it's weird. <laughs> A.K.A. my bus on the way to work, but uh, <laughs> I just haven't had time to put episode two together, so. Sure. And we might be spacing things out some more, you know. Transition? If you like. We're trying out a new, uh, a new method of, of video updating. Thanks to words of wisdom from your best friend, Total Biscuit. Oh my god, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I guess, yeah, how did how did that come up? Oh, we had put up, oh, the first Creepypasta video. Well, we had put it up, uh, it was like half an hour long, which is longer than our usual Red Supreme videos. And, you know, the next one I was ready to put up, and I had, uh, it was a half hour long, and the third one was an hour long, you know? And I was just kind of like, with, when it comes to longer videos, I'm like, do I want to push it up, like, the same day as the 30-minute video, the day after? Should I give people a little while to watch it? Like, because, um... In theory, there's no reason you shouldn't just put it up immediately, because it's there all the time. It's not going or it's all on-demand and free, so... Well, let, let me rewind a bit. I did meet Total Biscuit in real life. Um, Here couple, we go. A couple months back. No, no, no. Okay. And I, this is a, a funny story, actually, because... Do you remember Dark Side Phil? Of course. Yes, the one who said that you and I don't make creative Let's Plays, even though I'm the one who dissed him and you had nothing to do with it, really. Sure, you're right, yeah. Yeah. Or me and cheese him, rather. I was very hurt by that baby-faced bearded guy. Yeah. Um, uh, one time I tweeted I tweeted him or something like, uh, I think you need to take your medication or something. 
And Total Biscuit's like, uh oh, here we go. And then I was like, okay, I'm just kidding or whatever. Because the minute that I saw his tweet back, I was thinking, wait a second, what if that's actually accurate? You know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that to this guy or whatever, but it was one of those things where I'm like, you know, maybe I don't want to go there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. right. To be fair though, Dark Side Phil is kind of like the Duke of Let's Play. Yes, more or less. But when I when I met up with Biscuit in real life, uh, I said, okay, what is Dark Side Phil's deal here? And he kind of laughed, and he's like, "Okay, this guy he he makes let's plays, obviously, you know, you know his deal. But he he has and he has a, a fan base, but he basically puts up twenty videos a day. So he just records himself like hours and hours long sessions, cuts them up into twenty minute chunks, and pushes like everything he fucking has. Right. And he's like, it's like he's and he goes, I've even told him like, this is crazy. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Your fans cannot possibly keep up with that, you know." So that's the other extreme where you say, maybe I put up one video a week, maybe I put up twenty a day. What's, what, what's like, what can people take? And the, and the truth is, I mean, obviously it depends on the person. Some people really don't have much to do in a given day and can watch three hours of Retsu Prey. And some people, like, you know, another thing I had seen too is during Retsu Blitz. Like recently, I've seen people say like, had discussed like, oh, I don't remember that video. I was like, oh, it was during Retsu Blitz. It was this one. So it's possible too that mm. when we were doing three a day, that might have even been too frequent. Easier for stuff to fall through the cracks. Right, right, right. Mm. Biscuit's notion was you do one to two videos a day. That's usually about where it's going. So we, so when I I asked him like, well, what do you think about? I DM'd him on Twitter. I'm like, oh, you know, I said to him like, we just pushed up a thirty minute video. We got another thirty minute. I don't know. You you do this shit for a living. Like, what do you recommend like for mm. that? And he's like, and he was like, why don't you try a schedule where you say like you'll put one up at a set time, and then people can kind of expect when when they come that way, you know kind of makes, like, helps them sort of fit it into their schedule in sort of a way, you know what I mean? So, in other words, you become a part of their daily routine. I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but yeah, that's more that's that's more or less the idea. Or into a part of just any part of their routine. Well, you know, I mean... Daily, weekly. Routine. No, there is something to be said for the whole daily routine thing, because, like, I, I don't know about you, but when I get into work, I do have, like, two or three websites or things that I do check, you know? like some... Work-related, I hope. Oh, yes, we're like the something awful. Hopefully it's work.com. Like something awful front page, right, low tax, buddy? Um, hey. hey. No, uh, but you know what I mean. Like, so I was like, all right, let's give that a shot. And maybe it'd be something like a mini blitz or maybe even something that we get more regularly into. So now we're trying out a weekdays 8 a.m. thing using YouTube scheduling kind of thing. It's a handy thing. Right. And and like I said on Facebook, though, just, to, you know, I would... I would really, and I, I know you agree with this, so we'd rather err on missing the schedule rather than just putting something up just to meet the schedule. Like, yeah, it's more don't... like when we get into a groove where we just do a lot of stuff and we feel good about it, instead of yeah. vomiting it out all at once, we can space it out a little bit and then yeah. you guys kind of know when to expect it. Mm -hmm. I know, by the way, a couple of goons are, are not fans of the fact that I'm friendly with this Total Biscuit guy or whatever. He's a controversial he, figure. He is. For something awful, I think he is. For, for something awful, right. And all I remember of him, I've never spoken to him personally or anything, because he's your best friend. Oh, Jesus. But, you're, uh, my, you're my best friend. That's never going to change. You know, oh, I'm change. editing that out. <laughs> you uh, don't have to be <laughs> jealous. Um, he, um, he had a very... I guess bizarre first mm. po one of his first posts on something awful. It's uh, gas chambered there for posterity. It was from two thousand seven, I think. He he made okay. Um, he made he basically did like two cardinal sins of your first post on something awful at once. One he announced his IQ. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. He was like uh, three. Okay, three. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So this is all right. I'll. Since he's my best friend, I'll try to defend him here. But I'll okay. go ahead, go ahead, Edgeworth. <laughs> no, um, yeah, all right. So he, he, the first thing I was gonna say is, if you're gonna join something awful, the first thing you don't do is you never say like, oh, hey, I'm Brandon, I'm new to the forums, because this is my first post. Yeah, like people, and you'll see that in GBS, and everyone will kind of make fun of them. But even worse, he kind of, um, and I'm, I'm really not sure what exactly what his religious views are, but he brought up like how he felt the forums viewed religion versus atheism and why it's not that case and i think part of it was something to the fact that i'm not a stupid person and hence whatever you know uh yeah i mean yeah and he <laughs> and, signed his post and he signed his post <laughs> yeah. so he was due to be banned immediately no right. i mean i don't know it's it was it was a bad post on something awful and you know what can you do i'll, I'll say this though. so so 
Um, another that's one of the things a couple of goons have pointed out to me whenever they see me like tweeting to them or early on or whatever. And another thing I'll get into in a bit. But uh, the one thing I will say is that. Get back to Danganronpa! <laughs> oh, back, yes, exactly. Unless he talks about Danganronpa, we don't even want to hear about him. It's all I want out of you! <laughs> when, um... He got a, his million subscriber video at one point, I remember. And I talked to him a little bit, but uh, somebody had tweeted to me like, Hey, um, something awful got mentioned on there. And I went to listen to it, and, um, you know... Uh, he had mentioned, like, in terms of Let's Play and things like that, he sort of thanked Something Awful Let's Play for him, and... For his being there, and in a couple of others' videos, like I think one of his content patch stuff, he's always been very like, you know, hey. Yeah, you that's what's kind of interested me about the whole thing is that even though people on the forums were very uh, repulsed at at him, he seems very friendly towards the forums despite that. And I think he kind of respects the forums for their reluctance to be so friendly and welcoming to new folks. Well, the thing is, uh, I think the thing about SA is. Um, we do try to be kind of true to our values in a way. It's, I, all right, that's a you already really, lost me. That's a really shitty schmarmy way to say it. But it's like you, we are kind of consistent about it's, at least in let's play that you know it's like it's it's etiquette. There's yeah. a certain kind of etiquette that right. is observed and yeah. kind of expected. Yeah, exactly. Like um, you, if you're gonna put up a camcorder let's play, you have to be fucking hilarious. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it's like this is low effort shit. You're here to promote your channel. Go fuck off. You know, things like that. And um, if people are, like, post something bad, but they're kind of willing to say, like, all right, well, what was bad about it? And sort of meet you halfway. People then kind of open up. They get out. They kind of put down the pitchforks and go, all right, look, your editing kind of sucks here. You need to, like, encode it like this. Why don't you try telling your guests? You know what I mean? Like, then they kind of get helpful if you're willing to say, yeah, like, I as long take as you have a little bit of self-awareness. Or you're a little thick-skinned, right? Exactly. Yeah, and if you are, then you'll find that they actually do kind of get off the high horse pretty quickly. Yeah. Kind know? of the same with Retsu Pride, too, with the lp -er folks. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, he, um, uh, after that initial bad post or whatever, I'm not, you know, I, I don't have his whole fucking sending all the posters for here, but he joined the LP form for a while, and um, the one thing he credits is that he basically learned how to edit together his videos from something awful, specifically his, like, old Shining Force, I think, Let's Play or whatever, you know? I don't know, but okay. Right. It's funny, though, because when I was talking to him on Twitter at first, like, um, I, I was like, I know this guy from somewhere, and it was something, I knew it was from Let's Play, and I remember then he got into a fight with somebody in the tech support for it, oh, which, yeah. is, which is funny, because if you're going to get into an argument with anyone anywhere in Let's Play, that's, like, the last place I'd expect, because, you know, with tech support shit, like, you're either right or wrong. There's not much room for subjective argument, but I, I just remembered that somehow. Hey, bro. Bro, let's yeah. take this to the tech support fort. I, knew, I had completely forgotten this, but I ended up banning him, too. Oh, you did? I, yeah, I had, I had forgotten that entirely, and he reminded me of it at one point. But uh, <laughs> Before I shove your face in mud. Right. So the big thing that people on Something Awful um, give him shit for, or at least kind of try to ward me away from, is his initial post, uh, his initial post like his first thread was bad, and um, they felt like he basically always wanted to be an internet celebrity. And what's interesting about that is, if you listen to, again, that one million subs video he has, which for the record, too, he mentions he didn't, he wasn't even that keen on doing because he doesn't think subscribers are, like, a worthwhile number, but, mm -hmm. like, a lot of his fans asked for it. But one of the things he mentions is, like, he actually just did this for fun. Uh, he used to work in finance in UK and then got laid off from his job, and his wife was like, look, you really like doing these videos. Why don't you, like, while you're, like, I guess, on severance or whatever... Why don't you just like try doing it more often? So and he did, and he kind of got into the whole esports commentating stuff. So and then he got finance, <laughs> right? <laughs> Self high five. But um, I I don't know. I mean, according to his story, and I do I do believe him. I met the guy. He's a good guy, and uh, he didn't always want to be like an internet celebrity. It was just one of those. Well, who does? <laughs> right? Well, I mean, who does? <laughs> Well, you know what's funny is, because um, another thing uh, that people, when the whole Nintendo copyright thing came about on something right. awful, a lot of people were like, well, you know, who the hell would ever want to make a living out of this? And my take on it is, like, I have nothing morally against it. If you want to make money that way, go nuts. It's I, just I, a very odd thing to shoot for. I think for me, my issue is, especially now being like a homeowner and I have... You know, like my wife, and you know, we're gonna have kids eventually, and stuff like that. For uh, and he, and for the record, Biscuit does have a wife and kids to support. But um, 
uh, for me uh, personally, it, it feels like something that could be very unstable. Like, I, oh, I yeah. could, you know, I, I mean, you, you never know. We could just get like three terms of service strikes on YouTube tomorrow and Retsu Prey is gone and we're back to square one. And we're not even trying to do something like that. So, like, if we ever made our living off of that, it's like so tenuous. Uh, you know, I don't feel particularly comfortable putting my whole bankroll on that. So ask your wife to step up. Go on. Yes, exactly. Well, she's yeah. going to have to. But um, that said, Biscuit works in finance, so I guess he knows what the f- or did. So that I guess he knows what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> no, so I don't know. I mean, it's I have nothing against it. I it's sure. uh, it's a little tough for me. I'd love to, you know play video games for a living and things like that, but whatever. It's I, a very new quote-unquote industry. Yeah. I shouldn't say I'd love to do it, because I, I I, do like the fact that we do this for fun, and you can just sort of walk away, you know? Yeah, like well, was, exactly. When you do it for a living, there become... And this is... We actually posted on our Facebook just to kind of uh, put our feet in the water and see what people thought about, you know, do you like the idea of scheduled videos, or do you just like them randomly? And then kind of the number one thing was, well, we don't want you guys to feel like you're obligated to put up videos. Sure. To keep to a schedule, just do it when you want, and we're fine with that. Absolutely. And there's a lot of merit to that, for sure. Yeah. Well, the weird thing to do, you have to remember, too, Biscuit's not a Let's Player, either. Right, right. He actually is in the... I'm not clear on what his job is, but he is in the industry, more or less. You'd call... Yeah. Of video games journalism, I guess? Yeah. And despite, like, being friendly with him, right? I do like to talk to him about, like, he he is way more in the know when it comes to, like, the big-name YouTube partners and things like that. Is he hiring? I mean, (laughs) uh, I mean, what? Can I I tell you, like, one thing I learned from him, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not dissing anybody here, but Toby Turner, a.k.a. Toby Games. Right. Despite having a uh, has a bodyguard whenever he goes, I you're to, about to say PhD. <laughs> yeah, PhD now. Yeah, uh, he might. Um, I, I don't think so, but he might. Uh, no, he uh, he actually has a bodyguard whenever he goes to like events or whatever. So he is the Justin Bieber of YouTube. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty accurate. Or is it PewDiePie? I'm not sure. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's funny though. It was kind of a conversation we had when we had met up because yeah, he happened to be in New York basically, and I was just like, hey, whatever, I'm right in the area. You flew to London to meet him. Come I on. flew to London. right? We know. No, um, what? And there was this topic we got into because he was like, you know, I don't mind being an asshole sometimes on the internet. If you ever like look at his Twitter, he's he gets into like he's get, uh, he's very happy to engage people. Yeah, and like engages and fight people. Right. Engages in combat. No. Um, engages in uh, promise to marry. Right. But, like, yeah. one of the things he was saying is, like, that I think that he was mentioning, you know, part of the reason maybe uh, that people kind of feel like, or, or the reason Toby Turner needs a bodyguard, or the reason that, like, or I, I guess the discussion I'm trying to get at is the sort of quote unquote e celebrity kind of thing that, you know, we're very minorly in, that he's kind of in, and or he is in, and uh, PewDiePie, all those people, you know. It's funny because the way I the way I personally see it, it's like you get all the bad shit that comes with fame, and not really any of the good. Like you get stalkers mm. and people who like kind of sure. act weird around you. Yeah, not that we have stalkers, but like you know what I mean. Like if Toby Turner needs a bodyguard because he goes to meetings and people do that, you know. It, it, that said, if if you go into Times Square and you ask people like, have you ever heard of? Felix, whatever his PewDiePie, or you ever heard of PewDiePie? Other people are going to say no, and that nothing against him. Like if you ask, you ever heard of John? You know, Total Biscuit guy? No. Did you ever hear of Mike from Retro? No. You know what I mean? Like your average person does not. It's all the subculture, but you still get those people who are like within that subculture who are uh, very right. zealous. Yeah. yeah, and they. I think what happens is what we we're discussing is people. I think maybe build up an image of a celebrity or an e-celebrity or whatever you fucking call it. In their mind, and if that person doesn't meet their expectations, they can kind of, if they're crazy, they can kind of feel betrayed. And snap. Right, yeah. So, And this then whole, you got a creepypasta on your hands. Yeah, so this whole thing is, like, I, I don't mind acting like an asshole, because then I don't get people who, like, fucking love me too much. Which is like, okay, that's not a bad idea. I never actually. thought of it that way, actually. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. so now I don't, I'm, that's, I don't mind that you're the, the people, that, the person that everyone likes in Retsu Prey. Basically, oh, you're you're kind of that. You're my you're my secret service agent without realizing more or less. I gotta make some tweets. Or maybe if you walk behind me at PAX, I'll be yours. So okay, that's fair. diabetes, you didn't live up to me. You're not really diabetic. Bang. But um, <laughs> like no, I'm slow beef. Right. It is right. Like Toby. Toby pro- does make money off this. That's probably his big. 
Again, not dissing him, not saying anything like that. I'm just saying, like, that's probably his big positive thing from his quote-unquote celebrity. But yeah, he doesn't have to do anything else. Yeah, there's no... I don't know that people... Maybe they are. I don't... Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know that people would know him, though, on the street and just say, hey, how are you, or whatever, you know what I mean? It's all kind of in this virtual world in the subculture. Same with PewDiePie, you know? But you do get the negative of that. So how do people in the subculture know where he is that he would need a bodyguard? No, I'm saying when he goes to events. Oh, like the Comic Cons and Paxes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Where yeah. he would obviously be okay. Yeah, and Biscuit was mentioning someone I think he had done videos with. I'm start name starts with a G, and I'm completely blanking on it right now. But um, someone had they went to Pax, and then like this uh, woman who was a huge fan of the guy was getting really like pushy and creepy with him, and they had to remove her from Pax for this stuff. You know what I mean? Wow. And I don't think I mean nothing like that's really ever happened to us, thankfully, because we are no one. But. <laughs> No, everyone who's come met us has been extremely friendly. Absolutely, yeah. I guess that's the story about how, I don't know, I started, like, talking to Biscuit and shit, you know? I, I personally have no problem with him. He's always been pro something awful, and I just have, you know, I, I've certainly made shit posts on SA, you know, so... Who, sure, I have as well. Yeah. So, whatever. Now, now I hypocritically ban people for it. But at, at, at the very least, it's usually about Danganronpa. How does it work? I'm sorry? How does it work? How does Danganronpa work? Yeah, what is it? What is a Danganronpa? Oh, we've talked about this a million times. <laughs> um, Danganronpa is my personal hell. Sure. Uh, and I and I it's it's very funny because I have never. Um, I it, it's the second time in my life actually that I have disliked something video game related solely because of the fans. I was shocked because it felt like the second part of it was going on for so long. And I asked you at one point, well, how far is the threat at this point? And you said chapter two. Yeah, it's not even... And I was, huh? Yeah, uh, the OP is purposely keeping it, I think, under wraps how long the game is. Um, the, the first game was six chapters. They're on chapter two, and it's been going on since December, I think. And the thread is hundreds? Oh, yeah. Of pages? Hundreds of pages. Like yeah, for two chapters. Uh-huh. And so by two chapters, we mean... One update is prologue. One update is chapter one. One update is chapter two. Or are there sub chapters? Um, there are there are sub chapters. Um, so, with the exception of the prologue, it starts out. I guess it, it, you can call it normal days, but it has the ab in front of it in parentheses, kind of like. I guess the way I read it is sort of implying things are weird, but not super weird, and that's just like a setup thing. And then what happens is someone gets murdered, and you go into full on abnormal days, which is part two of the chapter. Then you go into school trials, which is part three of the chapter. So we are on abnormal days in chapter two, meaning the second part of chapter two. So we still have school trials to go, and then we'll be on chapter three. Didn't follow the word of that, but okay. Okay, all right. Um, but, uh, you know, I mentioned this is the second thing. Um, and this is uh, uh, just to make this a little interesting to people who don't care about Tang and Rampa so much. Did you ever watch Zero Punctuation? Uh, yeah, I used to. Yeah, me too. Yahtzee's a uh, fan of Red Spray, isn't he? He is. And uh, um, I'll say, too, I've, I've started watching it again recently, and it is very funny. But there was a time I stopped, and I didn't like it, and it had absolutely nothing to do with him. Oh, is he also your best friend? No, he isn't at oh. all. No, he, he hates me. No, okay. I don't know. What happened was uh, he had done a review, this is back in the day, of Metal Gear Solid 4. Like I said, the guy's funny, I like him and stuff, but I wasn't a fan of that one. And... On the zero punctuation thread and something awful, I think like a couple people kind of were like, eh, this wasn't quite his best one, which is fine, you know. I mean, everybody has an off day or sure. whatever. But his fans were like bending over fucking backwards to defend it. Oh, on the something awful thread, even? Yeah, 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 especially in the something awful thread, where it's like, oh, Metal Gear 4 doesn't have enough game to make fun of, and like, Metal Gear Solid 4 is barely anything. It's like, if you can't make fun of a Metal Gear Solid game, Wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I mean, looking back on it, I think maybe he, he, it seemed like he focused a lot of his stuff on Act 1, whereas the really fucked up shit comes, I think, in Act 2 and beyond. Yeah. And he did play through the game, because if you look at Fully Ramblematic, his blog, he had mentioned, like, some things shit about the ending he didn't like. But whatever, whatever. Uh, the point is, I was, like, really put off by the fans, and I'm like, you know, the whole point of SA in games is, like, you're supposed to not just be this rabid fanboy kind of thing. You're supposed to be able to have, like, a normal fucking discussion about it. Sure. But uh, nobody was having that, you know. So, um, and then, the other, then like, the other thing is he had a Bionic Commando um, review. You know how they remade it before 
by Acumando Rearmed, that is. Yeah, someone actually gifted me that on Steam. I really like that game, by the way. I haven't played it, though. The first one. I heard the second one's terrible, but, um... Uh, oh, well, never mind. Right. And he mentioned um, this whole thing with retro game. You know, he doesn't like how certain holdovers from old video games, like Lives, are still a part of things. And I think he has a very good point there. I was just kind of like... I don't know, like, Bionic Commando Rearmed is a hell of a game, like, when it comes to, you know, like, I, I think they were very smart and rearmed about the old stuff they brought in and the new stuff they brought into it, you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. So I just felt like that was kind of like a, not maybe not the best example of that. So I brought that up, and then people got pissed at me for bringing it up, and I'm just like, I'm fucking done with this, you know? I'm gonna go mod Let's Play. I'm gonna go mod Let's Play where I understand things! No, this is before uh, I modded Let's Play, but, oh. uh... Oh, no, no, it wasn't, actually. I'm sorry, it wasn't. But You've either. always modded Let's Plays. <laughs> Danganronpa's been around since the dinosaurs. That's the creepypasta twist, is I've always modded Let's Play. <gasps> um, no, but uh, it, it, it was one of those things, too, where I got really then turned off from zero punctuation, as in I didn't find it sexy anymore, because of the fans. And it's like, it sucks because that's totally not Yahtzee's fault at all. And in Right, fact, exactly. Yeah, he, and even though I didn't... I disagree with the two episodes. He's still funny, and it's still this, you know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. So, I kind of forget where we, oh, yeah, so Danganronpa, yeah, so, <laughs> um, I, I, I derailed far there. Welcome back to the Danganronpa podcast. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, there's nothing, so, I guess similarly, I mean, although Yahtzee's better than Danganronpa too, but, um, no, all right, enough. Similarly, though, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the Danganronpa 2 Let's Play, that is, the con contributions by the by the author, by the people helping him with it. Yeah, it's really everybody else. It's everybody else, yeah. Yeah, people are insane. Did you know, for example, I make a lot of money off banning people who well, don't I like heard you literally making a living off of it. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I am I am literally making a living off of shitting on other people's work. I guess that's Retsu Prey and Dang and Ronpo somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, kind of an all encompassing job position. <laughs> Oh, you're going to post this this weekend, right? Um, I, I don't know. Are we, are we trying to, speaking of scheduling, Oh yeah. are we trying to do regular feature podcasts now? I feel like we've really talked about nothing, but somehow almost an hour has gone by. I know. Um, I don't know yet. Um, I, I'd like to play it by year more just because I'm going to be done with class on August 8th. Sure. So I'm not 100% sure on my availability through then. Let's shoot. Let's let's shoot for let's shoot for it. Let's shoot well, for weekly. And you then... know, next week I can make a bunch of silly noises and talk about Happy Wheels into a microphone for an hour and have that be episode 26. We we'll just call it Easy Money Three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though we well, don't make any money from the podcast. Yeah. Why don't you just get Total Biscuit on the podcast? Why don't you just steal? One He's of his not videos? my best friend. Why don't you just steal one of his videos and post it on our channel <laughs> and do the same for Yahtzee while we're at it? We'll call it British Monday and Australian Tuesday. I'll just do my best Total Biscuit impression and try to emulate one of his videos. <laughs> oh, I don't like this game very good. WTF is this bullshit? Right <laughs> off you come real quick, you royal baby. His name Biscuit. Yeah, how's that? That was actually F when I saw him in New York. I said hi, and that was exactly what he said back to well, me. Well, actually, uh, he just came into my room and said that into the microphone. <laughs> and now he's gone. Taking a plane back right now. Well, you like to moderate Let's Play, yeah? Well, <laughs> when you're going to do it, maybe you should like, not... Banned people, yeah. I'm not sure what though. country me accent's from now. <laughs> I, Crikey, that was the mate. the impression I've ever done. Um, I'm Rampa. quite cynical here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I literally hate Danganronpa now, and it's totally not Danganronpa's fault. <laughs> I like, there's an anime, I watched a little of one episode, and I'm like, I just don't care anymore. So has Orn Ronan leaked to you how long the game is? You don't have to say how long, but are, I'm asking that, because no. are you doing kind of a tick thing, like you're in prison and marking off how, many, how much time goes by until you're free? Nah, I'll, I'll be 100% honest. It, it's gotten better, the thread. Um, it's usually just, like, one major event happens, like, once every two months, you know? And it's like... Mm. Um, but I don't know how long the game's going to last. I kind of don't want to, because... I The thing that interested me most about the game is the murder mystery aspect. I like to kind of, like, wonder who's going to die next, and then how they were killed and all that. And I don't really give a shit about the whole... How did this get set up? Who's who's controlling the school? Why is this happening? Like, I don't give a fuck. It's it's going to be some stupid anime reason. And you know, there's a reality TV show now about people who get killed. Yeah. Huh? It's called Who Done It. Is there? 
yeah, it, yeah. People don't actually die. It's all fake. Oh yeah, yeah and everybody yeah. on the show knows it's fake. But it's it's a murder, it's a terrifying murder mystery show. So they stole the idea of Dangan Ramba. Exactly. Yeah, okay, gotcha. It's it's completely it's an animated reality show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, the, the thing, the reason I wanted to bring up our podcast regularity is maybe then by now you might have seen we have two Danganronpa videos up, one featuring um, my internet boss, Lotax, right. um, who has gotten into, with Schmorky, has now gotten into his own brand of Let's Play, where he makes fun of shitty games he finds off, like, Game Maker kind of sites. Yeah, they're really funny videos. I'd recommend you watch them. Actually, they are, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not just saying that because he can fire me from my not paying job. And Lotax was also play. kind enough to edit the second video. Yeah, he's actually kind of uh, amazing. An audio awesome. savant, yeah. He really is, yeah. Like, um, I remember back in the day when we did webcam work, he had, like, he walked me through doing all, like, this audio shit with, like, Gold Wave and Sony Vegas and all that stuff. And then you threw all that out the window. Oh, yeah, no. He's, yeah. He's, he's like, oh, fuck that, yeah. <laughs> I'm on Mac, nothing applied. So, um, <laughs> no, but, like, it's funny because, you know, everything the Let's Players call, like, auto-ducking, or everybody on to say, apparently the real term is side-chaining. And that's like, he's like, yeah, and he like didn't even look at the tech support for it or anything with auto ducking. He just kind of knew. He's like, yeah, you side chaining to like lower the game whenever we're talking. And he does like a thing which is interesting because he said he put our voices. So it was me, him, and Mr. DJB. And he said he put, I think, mine right, his left, and DJB in the middle. Yeah, and you can kind of hear that like subtly, not like all right or all left, but kind of vaguely. It's, and it's weird. That's the thing. Cause he but it doesn't to... sound bad. It sounds no, pretty it, good. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sound like I'm completely on your right channel. It sounds more like it kind of takes advantage just because my headphones are good or something. But, like, it kind of takes advantage of, like, a sort of surround feature where it feels like we're at different places in a room. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like, I, it's something that I, I want to consider trying to emulate maybe for our future videos. But I'm very lazy. Absolutely. No, um, yeah, but he's getting into Let's Play now, which, you know, only took him, like, six fucking years. About time. But, uh, yeah, so I'm hoping, you know, he can do some... I want to get him in on a creepypasta, honestly. Do you think he'd be game for it? He apparently hopped into a Danganronpa Red Supre with no problem. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of the litmus test. It's like, yeah. e either A, that means he'll just do anything, or B, um, I've ruined it and he won't do anything else. Oh, you just did the worst thing in the world. Do you want to do something better? <laughs> yeah, basically. Hey, good. Right. It was funny, though, because we had a, a sort of weird after talk after the video, where I think he was trying to concede, like, okay, maybe this... That meaning Duncan Rampa. Maybe this could be interesting to certain people. I'm like, you're never gonna like it. Don't don't even, <laughs> don't even worry, Mr. GJP. Maybe I don't think. But I was actually considering maybe doing a third video where I try to play it straight and actually legitimately try to defend Duncan Rampa to the two of them. <laughs> I'd watch that. Right. But they both, or Mr. GJP, at least liked the fat character Yamada, the the fan fiction author guy. Because uh, it turns out that was actually a character, as far as I understand it, invented by the game designers to make fun of anime fans. Oh. Yeah. They were like, they're kind of like, I think these are going to be our fans. Let's just openly mock them. So. <laughs> and the thread proves that? <laughs> I guess so. Right? No. So there's that. That there is. Do we hit everything we wanted to? Um, and more. Pre pretty much. I played Mega Man Unlimited recently, but I don't know if that's worth talking about right now. It's not. Who gives a shit? No. And Tomb Raider. I'm playing that right now. No. The original Tomb Raider? No, the newer Tomb Raider. Oh, 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 right. During the right, Steam right. sale, it got cut down from $50 to twelve seventy-five, and I bought that shit. Nice. How it's it? really fun. Hmm. Kind of an un it's uncharted levels of adventure fun time. Do you still wince whenever Lara Croft dies? Uh, y Kind of. Okay. A little bit. She She's had a very bad day. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. I think it's something I tweeted when I was playing. I'm surprised a piano didn't fall on her at some point <laughs> during the opening part. It was ridiculous. Be assured if it did, it would have been very gory and hard to watch. Right. <laughs> Not even a little cartoony. <laughs> <laughs> like her head would have been out like, all of my dreams will never come true or something horrible. It'll be like a piano falls on her, then a boat crashes into her, then a plane falls on her, then an asteroid hits her, and then the earth explodes. And then you say, something's wrong with my copy of Tomb Raider. <laughs> the I don't remember this happening. Something's not right here. One day I should stream and you should try to read a couple of these. I'm down. All right, cool. 
I could record audiobooks of creepypastas. You could you could be my uh, you could be the Vincent Price to my Elvira. There. That didn't come out right. I don't think I'm comfortable with that. Actually. <laughs> At all. Mm. Yeah. So the podcast is back. Yay. Yay. Tune in next time where we talk about Total Biscuit for the entire hour. So the Total Biscuit show. The Total Biscuit Dang and Rodpa mix. I don't like this Dang and Rodpa one bit. <laughs> Here's why WTF reviewed it. I'm quite cynical about it, anyway. Oh, blimey, governor. You're oh, saying this bear murdered Toby Games. But I recall this video for the Queen. She don't like anime. <laughs> they just had a baby. Crikey. <laughs> Wanker. <laughs> What's the thing a stereotypical British people say? Let me go to the lift and upload me video. <laughs> <laughs> I left me a recorder in the boot of me car with the crumpets. Sorry if I sound like me mouth is stuffed, but I'm full of fish and chips. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing there's no way to make fun of a Jersey accent. Now let me read me creepypasta, Big Ben Drowned. <laughs> because I'm a terrorist. <laughs> Crikey. Alright, All right, let's, let's abort before this goes any further. Uh, we're out of here. Alright, take easy. Thank you.